What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. I am your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, a.k.a. Mental Illness from TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter a little bit more now. I tweet a little bit now. Tweet, tweet. Um, if this is your first time tuning into my channel, I am a diagnosed narcissist. I have narcissistic personality disorder. I know it sounds weird. I know it sounds unbelievable. But trust me, y'all. I've been in therapy for the last four years. This is my cross to bear, my narcissistic cross to bear. <laughs> Um, the point of my channel, the point of my entire platform is to bring you know, awareness to mental health disorders and to also get more people into therapy. I've got a few into therapy. I've got more. More and more are going. More and more are reaching out to me. So don't say I'm not doing anything. Um, and also in the process of the process of the process of doing that, I can't even talk straight. In the process of doing that, to validate the victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse and other you know mental health disorders and things like that. Today's episode is going to be about the closest person to a narcissist. How the closest person to a narcissist gets treated. And you're not gonna like this episode, y'all. I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna preface this. This is gonna this is your trigger warning. My whole account is a trigger warning. Like this is your trigger warning for my whole entirety of my account. You know, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. Um, but the closest person to a narcissist typically gets treated the worst. And that is that look, I talk about romantic relationships a lot, but this is this supersedes romantic relationships this is father son this is father daughter mother son mother daughter grandma grandson grandma granddaughter grandma you know it supersedes all of that but it's the the the, the relationship is you know irrelevant the way the person is treated is always going to be the worst like romantic relationships i talk about those a lot because those, that's the easiest thing for me to talk about because you know that's the most narcissistic abuse i've, I've seen on my tiktok account so the closest person, the husband, the wife, the kids, or whatnot, always seem to get treated the worst. And I know people are like, why? You know, the nar you'll be out in public with the narcissist. The narcissist will never give you a compliment. Don't tell, will never tell you how good you look. Will never tell you how good you smell, how good your feet look, your toes look, your hands look, your hair look, your, your edge up look, your fade look. Won't tell you anything. Get buzz cut, like that buzz, that buzz cut is sexy. You will never hear it from a narcissist if you were dealing with them in a romantic relationship. In the end of it, in the middle, in the beginning, you might hear that you girl, whoa, you are flaming hot, you are gorgeous. And then, how, uh, what's your boy's name? Um, angry actions, ain't what he said, gorgeous, you are gorgeous. So, in the beginning, beginning of a relationship, they'll the narcissist will lay it on you, lay the love bombing, ain't they what they call it? The idealization, aka love bombing, when they lay it on you, you is so look, your toes are the prettiest toes in the world, you are gorgeous, like that dress, whoo. What's that, uh, that song? Ain't got a dress that I don't like. Ain't got a pair of jeans that fit you just right. <laughs> um, Tonight it looks good on you. That's the song. That's one of my favorite songs, y'all. Um, it like they'll do that all day in the beginning of a relationship. Like we will lay it on you thick, but as we get to know you, as the relationship develops, the love bombing goes away and it turns into disdain. It turns into disappointment. Like you put on that same tight dress you had on the first night you met the narcissist that he laid that he laid all that attention on you. He was like, you're like, hey babe, how do I, how do I look? Mm, you okay? No, oh, I seen that dress before. Oh, that's, oh, that's it. That dress again. Cool. You know, not like like they don't care. You like what the hell? And you go out, and you just so happen to see like the the you know you go out to a bar or something like that. You see somebody, he sees somebody else with the same dress. I'm like, damn, that dress look good on her. And you're like, what the what? It's because the closest people to a narcissist get treated the worst. Like you, it just like y'all. Literally, that's just how it is. That's just the, the the blueprint of narcissism right there. The closest person does just this is how it goes. Because you know why? Because you can hurt the narcissist the most. And I know, I know, and I know that sounds counterintuitive. I know that sounds backwards as hell. It's like we can hurt the narcissist. There's no way narcissists do not feel pain. They don't feel. They don't feel anything. They are just robots. Narcissists are robots here to put here to hurt us. Nope. Narcissists feel pain, and narcissists feel like the person closest to uh, the closest the, the person closest to us can hurt us the most because they know mo the most about us. They know the real version of us that we've hide from public. They know like the, the 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 person behind the social media profile. They know the person behind the the LinkedIn. They know the person behind you know the mass following on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube or stuff like that. They know the real person. So that person right there, the narcissist feels like they have to protect themselves against. So that's why they devalue. That's why we sit there here and that's why we will literally devalue to make you feel like you are, wor you are worth less than what you are really worth. 
and that's why they, you know the narcissist will treat you so badly because they feel like you can hurt us the most like if this person came out and told the world like wrote a tell-all book on me that would ruin me so you know what i need to do i need to make this person feel so terrible about terribly about themselves they won't do that like I need to make this person feel so badly about themselves that they just don't have the strength or energy to want to do that. They, their self-worth and self-value is so low that they just will not come out against me and say anything. And guess what? If they do, my reputation in the public eye is so airtight. It's so airtight that it won't even matter. And guess what? With the reputation is so airtight that you can't say anything bad about the narcissist where people won't believe you, your family and friends don't even believe you, that will drive you absolutely insane because you know the real story you know the truth and you try to tell your truth and nobody listens to your truth you're like i'm trying to tell my story and nobody listens to me so you keep your story to yourself because you think it's pointless nobody will believe you the trolls online will come to get you when it's come to social media the trolls online will come get you hey you just don't say it about my favorite tiktoker you don't know him like i'm married to him like you still don't know him. we know him better than you do he helps everybody, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. And, and the situation arises in that, right there. He, like, I know y'all wondering, like, would you, can your wife do that to you? My wife can write a tell-all book on me, but I'm telling y'all everything. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling I'm telling all of myself. You know what I mean? I call it, if you've watched my videos before, I call it the eight mile. I call it eight mile of myself. Can you do ever watch the movie Eminem, Eight Mile with Eminem? When the, the last rap battle, he came out there and spit on himself. He talked all that trash about himself. Yeah, I do live in a trailer park. Yeah, I do live at home with my mom. And old boy did sleep with my girl. Yeah, man. He said all the bad stuff about it, so the dude couldn't rap on it. That's what I be doing. That's what my TikTok account is. That's what my YouTube is. That's what my Instagram is. It's me rapping on myself. I'm dropping a beat on myself. So you can't say anything bad about me. You try. You'll try. People try People try to have gotcha moments on me. Like, gotcha. And the people who've been following me for a while, like, no, you, you haven't got him. He said that three months ago. He said that last year when he first started. He's like, he said it. He's been saying that for years. So, no, you didn't get him. You got yourself. You played yourself. Yes. Um, but yeah, if you're the closest person to a narcissist, the best, the, the, you have to, you have to protect yourself against the narcissist most of all. Because like I said, they, especially with dog whistling. If you know what dog whistling is, dog whistling is when a narcissist will, they have like, they they'll say the narcissist will say stuff that only you, that only you know, that only you, that would trigger you. You know, and so if a dog like, you know how a dog like, if I have a dog whistle and I blow it, only dogs can hear it. That's the same thing with a trigger the narcissist knows about you. You know. Especially if, like, if you if you had some kind of embarrassing moment that you just haven't told anybody else about, but the narcissist, the narcissist will just break it up just subtly in conversation with other people. Like let's say it's about dogs. Like let's say you you hit a dog or something like that, and you were just so embarrassed about it because you're a dog lover and things like that. And then the narcissist will just say it in the crowd. The people are just like, yeah, people who people who hit dogs and just drive away are the worst people on the planet. And everybody else will start agreeing, and you're just looking at the narcissist like you mother. Beep. And the narcissist looks at you like a little sly smile, just like mm -hmm. you're triggered because you think you know he's talking about you. You know he's talking directly about you, and you, he can he or she. I know I know women can be narcissists too. Y'all talking directly to the mic. I know women can be narcissists as well. And you know he or she can just bring it up on you and just drop the bomb on you and embarrass you in front of everybody because now everybody is agreeing with the sentiment that that, that they said. It's like. Yeah, everybody, people who hit dogs and run away, drive off, are the worst people on the planet. And then you just sitting up there quiet. Like, what do you think? Yeah, I, 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 I agree that people, you know, that people who hit who hit dogs and drive off are the, are the worst people on the planet. And then the narcissist finally started to have a little inside clap. Like, yes, they are, honey. The people who hit dogs are the worst people on the planet. I'm glad you said that. And now you feel terrible. Dog whistle. You get treated terribly. Everybody, like, you get treated terribly. Like, you'll go out to onto a. You'll go out. And uh, like you, like you, your love language will be like physical touch. Like you love to be touched and caressed and kissed and hugged and stuff like that. The narcissist will come home and you will be expecting that, and they'll go, they'll walk right by you, ignore you, and go love up on the dog, love up on the kids and stuff like that, and just skip you. Don't even speak to you. Just come over to love it on, come on, come on, little doggy, mama, little, my little daddy, baby, mama, and ignore the hell out of you. You hurt. You like. You just ignore me like that. I don't mean so. You gonna walk past me, and that, it triggers you too. Sometimes you get triggered by stuff like that. It'll trigger you. Like, oh my goodness, you walk right past me and hug the dog. You know I like hugs. See, and look, see, when they when they do it enough, when the narcissist does it enough, it conditions you. It conditions you to not expect it. And when the narcissist does it, they come in the house one day, and they hug you and they kiss you. And that little bit of breadcrumbing right there, that little bit of intermittent reinforcement right there, 
feels like so much more than what it is. That normal, that normal human reaction feels like so much more than what it is. Because you've been getting treated so badly, that little bit of love and affection and care, that little bit of reading your love language back to you means so much more than what it's supposed to mean. That's normal human reaction. You got a hug and a kiss. Y'all been married for 20 years. You got a hug and a kiss. Now you're like, it feels like the first time you ever hugged and kissed somebody. It feels like the, the, the person that bought you a Range Rover or Audi or BMW. If y'all want to buy me a gift for my 36th birthday, it's coming up July 14th. BMWs are, I'm a, I have a thing for BMWs. I, I will not turn down the BMW. And I'm just joking. Um, but yeah, you, you if you're the closest person to a narcissist, it's just how it is, y'all. I know I, I wish I could give y'all tips and tricks on how to combat that, but like literally that's just how it is. You have to stand in your truth and know that that person is that's what that person is doing. They're being intentionally malicious to you. They're intentionally hurting you in situations like that. Because like if you were to try to break up with the narcissist for not loving and caring and showing you affection, I guarantee you, if you looked at narcissists directly in their face and said, Hey look, I'm believing you. I'm leaving you. I'm done with you. They also are blubbering. I'm, I'm sorry, baby. Please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. Please, don't leave me. Please. I love you. I'll do anything you want. I'll make you happy. And they will literally turn it on right there and start giving you everything that you want and need. And you don't have to tell them what you want and need. You know why? Because they knew what you wanted and needed and they just were withholding it from you. So because, they, you know, because it, it's malicious. It's malicious intent. It's like, damn, you... Damn, you know exactly what it takes to make me happy. Why weren't you doing this before until I tried to leave you? Why were you not doing this before until I tried to disappear and ghost you? Why? Because they were being malicious. So ask yourself that question. Every time a narcissist turns it on and starts to try to impress you in front of everybody else, ask you why you didn't do this. Ask them why you didn't do this before I tried to leave. You knew what it took to make me happy. You knew what it took to make me feel good about myself. And you just didn't do it on purpose because you didn't care because you were trying to intentionally hurt me. Ask them why. Ask him why. I've, I've got so many messages in my inbox from people I've done one on ones with. They tell me it's like, I think I think he's changed. I think he's he turned over a new leaf. I think he's changed and started to do everything I wanted because he knows what you want. He's just not doing it. My like, goodness gracious, y'all, open your eyes up. These like, open your eyes. Open your eyes up. These people know what it takes to make you happy. They just don't do it because they know it makes you happy. Think about it like that. Open your damn eyes up and see this stuff. It gets on my nerves, y'all. When y'all waste so much time and effort and energy on these people that don't care. They are intentionally hurting you and using you, and they do not care. And you put so much time, effort, and energy to it. And you come at me and you're like, oh, it's a trauma bond. I know it's the trauma bond. You know it's the trauma bond. And because you know it's the trauma bond, you can break it. If you know you are trauma bonded, you can take the correct steps to break the trauma bond. You can start practicing self-love. You can start journaling. You can start getting around people that have been through similar experiences. You can start talking to people about it. You can stop internalizing all the hate, the struggle, the embarrassment. You can t you can do that. You can break the trauma bond because you know it exists. It's the people that don't know it exists that I be feeling bad for. Like, this person does not know they're trauma bonded. If a person comes to me and says, I don't know what keeps bringing me back. I, I'm just hurting. I'm crying. I'm pleading. I'm begging to plead. What's going on? Hey, look, I think you might be trauma bonded. Here. Here's the trauma bond recovery journal by Lisa Sony. Check this out. Oh, this is what it is. This is playing so much. Those are the people I be feeling bad for. But if you could open your mouth and say, hey, I'm trauma bonded. That's why I keep going back. I'd be like, you know it. Let's just take the steps in the right direction to break it then. Because if you don't want to break it, then you, you, the narcissist think, if you don't want to break that, if you want to stay in this relationship, you are a willing participant. And that's why, that's why they do not care about wasting your time or treating you terribly. Because once you know the trauma bond exists and you choose to stay in that position, you become a willing participant. You become uh, you become a you become an active participant in this in this in this relationship now. Now you now it's willful, and that's how they treat you. They treat you like it's willful. Like I, you didn't have to stay. You knew what was going on. You knew how I've been treated. You, you didn't have to stay in this relationship. You knew what was going on. So you are willing. Like you are a willful participant, and I don't feel bad about anything I've done to you because you knew what I was doing, and that breaks you. They will look at you directly in your face and say you could have left. You knew who I was, and that breaks you. And you had the chance to take your power back, but you chose not to because you knew what the Trump, you knew what the Trump bond, and you chose not to. So let's power up and take your power back. And that's what I'm doing. I want narcissists to stop hurting people. I want you to go get help. Stop working your take. Stop taking your power. Stop, stop working your issues out on your significant others, your kids, and your family. Start working it out, working it out in the therapist chair. And this, if you are narcissist watching this, this is this, I'm gonna end this video quick. 
if you're a narcissist watching this and you think I'm, I'm adding to the stigma of narcissists, what the hell are you doing to take the stigma away other than sharing memes and being ghost online? Shut the hell up and make, take some action then. If you think I'm adding to the stigma, instead of trying to attack me, take some action to, to break the stigma instead of being part of it. Yeah, damn losers. Like, we're here, like, you're adding to the stigma. What the hell are you doing to break the stigma? My entire social media existence is breaking, is stigma busting. There's a narcissist out there helping people. What are you doing? They, 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 hey, you know Lee Hammond? He's a narcissist that helps people. He's a good guy. To all narcissists aren't bad people? Damn. His existence is stigma busting. But this part, these people over here that hide behind their uh, anonymous profiles and try to troll me, what the hell are you doing? You're added to the stigma. You're an enabler. You're an ableist. Sucking ableist. Beep. I'm, look, if you got something to say to me, come find it. Online trolls, like, I want to find his post that he did this. So what the hell are you going to do online? You're going to worry some words online that's going to hurt my feelings? Like, get the hell out of here. I'm changing the world. Y'all was there sharing memes and stupid. I can't cuss. Sharing memes and stupidity. But anyways, I'm rant over. Rant is over. Y'all want to see the narcissism pop out? There you go. There you have the narcissism popping up, popping out at the end of this video. So you tuned in. You got to see the narcissist reveal himself at the end of the video. So if you think I'm an ableist to narcissistic stigma, boop. There you go. Boop. What are you doing? Nothing. You're not doing anything to change the stigma. You're just adding to it by being hit, hidden, scared, and cowardice. Trying to troll the, the self-aware narcissist. Get out of here. Anyways, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. <laughs> I know I, I know I went up on a rant. I get passionate. I get passionate. Break the trauma bond. Stop the stigma. Let's get it. Peace.